Oftentimes in our jazz education, we pay particular attention to melodic and harmonic elements of learning jazz repertoire and of jazz improvisation. However, we often leave rhythm on the back burner when rhythm is actually a very important part of understanding jazz music and of feeling time and of creating great, interesting jazz solos. We need to use rhythm. We need to understand rhythm better. So in today's episode of Jazz Standards Month on the Learn Jazz Standards podcast, we are going to look at some rhythmic motific development over the jazz standard. Someday, my prince will come. Let's do this thing. Welcome to the LJS Podcast, where you get weekly jazz tips, interviews, stories, and advice for becoming a better jazz musician. And now your host, he's a jazz musician, author, and entrepreneur, Brent Bartstra. What's up, everybody? Brent here from LearnJazzStandards.com, which is a blog, a podcast, and videos all geared towards helping you become a better jazz musician. I am pumped to be here. I'm excited to be here. I always am because uh, I'm just passionate about sharing with musicians like yourself how to become a better jazz musician. If it's a big way, if it's in a small way, I'm just excited to do it. I'm happy that you're here. And this is the third episode of Jazz Standards Month here on the LJS Podcast, uh, which is the month where we're just going to be spending time looking at jazz standards, trying to figure out how can we learn them better, how can we understand them better, and how can we improvise over them better, which is where today's episode comes into play. And like I mentioned, we're going to be talking about rhythm in particular and using rhythm as the basis for creating great jazz solos. Now, I was talking with a friend last night. He teaches uh, children, in particular, piano. And he was talking about how he truly believes that we need to understand rhythm and that his students need to understand rhythm and be able to feel the rhythm in their bodies away from their instrument in order to really understand the time feel of the song in order to uh, not get lost in the form. And that's hugely important. That's one big reason that we hone into rhythm, that we need to be working on rhythm. And another big reason is because if we use rhythm as a basis to start developing musical ideas, our solos become so much more interesting. And you're going to see that today uh, because I compose this little rhythmic motific development etude exercise over the jazz standard someday my prince will come so that's what's coming up in this episode today i think you're going to find this quite interesting and i think you're going to find this quite actionable and something that you can do and add to your practice routine this week especially because i know a lot of you aren't working enough on rhythm and how do i know that i mean it's just it's just really in the whole western music idea of jazz education in schools you know, it's really melodic and harmonic stuff is taught more than rhythm. And so I know that we neglect this a little bit and I can raise my hand and say, hey, you know what? I need to work more on this stuff too. Now, today's lesson comes straight out of my new ebook, The Jazz Standards Playbook, Volume 2, which goes over 10 jazz standards, an in-depth study of these 10 jazz standards to help us understand them better, to help us learn how to improvise over them better. And Someday My Principal Come is one of the standards that we cover in this book. And that's coming out. This Sunday, May 26, 2019, really, really excited about this book. I think it's been about five months that me and the LJS team have been working on this, sweating over this, worrying about this, and so it's finally come to fruition. I'm just really excited, as I am every time I create an ebook, a companion course, or just a regular course. I'm just always excited to share this with you guys because uh, I only make these to help you and to, uh, they're really made specifically for my subscribers here at Learn Jazz Standards. So uh, I know you're going to be interested in this. And right now we have a sign up list if you're listening to this in real time. So if you want to get early notification for this, you can go to the Jazz Standards Playbook 2, that's number two, the Jazz Standards Playbook 2.com and sign up there. Or if you're listening in the future past May 26, that book will be available to you at the Jazz Standards Playbook 2. Dot com. This is going to be a really helpful book for all of you. I know it. And uh, this is just a little taste of what it, it's going to be like. Just a little improv lesson from this book today. All right. So the Jazz Standards Playbook 2.com. So fired up about this. All right. Let's jump right in to today's show. All right, so while we're not going to go over the chords analysis of Someday My Prince Will Come, which we do cover in the Jazz Standards Playbook Volume 2, 
Uh, I'm going to dive into the improv lesson today, which, like I said, has to do with rhythmic motific development. Now, a couple things about Someday My Prince Will Come that lends itself really well to this exercise I'm about to go over. Well, first of all, Someday My Prince Will Come is in 3-4 time, and we're all very familiar with 4-4 four, four time. And yes, 3-4 time is probably the next most familiar time signature that we're involved in, that we understand best uh, as musicians. And then we got 7-8, which is starts getting a little bit more confusing for people, and 5-4, five, 5-8, five, you know, things like this, where that starts to get more out in the stratosphere of not being common. So yes, 4-4 four, four, and 3-4 are more common times, but I find that a lot of improvisers do struggle, and I'll raise my hand too, that sometimes improvising over 3-4 isn't as easy for me as it is over 4-4. Four, four. So how do we start tackling that? Well, I think rhythm is the best way to approach that. And as well, if you don't want to get lost while you're playing eighth note lines over 3-4 because you're used to playing over 4-4, four, four, how can you really start solidifying that time inside of you? Well, it's through rhythms. And so that's why today's exercise is really going to be helpful for you. By the way, I will have some examples today at the show notes, so go to learnjazzstandards.com forward slash episode 168, and I'll have uh, one half of the example that I'm going to show you today. All right, so you can go there if you want to check this out. So first of all, uh, we're going to apply what I call rhythmic motific development over top of someday my prince will come in order to start developing rhythmic solo ideas. So if we're going to talk about rhythmic motific development, we need to start with some definitions here. So first of all, what is a motif? A motif is just a short melodic or rhythmic idea that is repeated over and over again within a piece of music or a composition. And oftentimes when we think of a motif, we think of it in the melodic sense, you know, just like a little melody, a short little melody, maybe it's a bar or two uh, that is repeated over and over again. And then motific development is just simply the concept of developing that idea. But the idea of a motif is you have a theme, and the development side of it is developing that theme, right? So this makes great solos, right? I mean, we want to create solos that have a theme to it, that have a direction to it. You know, all these things are great. So when we talk about rhythmic motific development, though, we're really approaching it from not a melodic standpoint. We're approaching it first from a rhythmic standpoint. So basically creating rhythms that are consistent with each other, that are thematic with each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to compose, well, I already have composed, (laughs) uh, a rhythmic motific development exercise over top of Someday My Prince Will Come. And the idea of this first is I'm not starting with any notes at all. I'm starting strictly with rhythms. And so I'm going to play here a track. It's just... uh, you're going to be able to hear the time really clearly and how the rhythms fit because the piano just plays right on beats one uh, each chord of Someday My Prince Will Come. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clap uh, these eight bar motific ideas here. So I'm going to do, I'm going to repeat motifs for eight bars, and then I'm going to switch it up for another, a different kind of rhythm, a different mo- r- uh, rhythmic motif over the following eight bars. So you're going to hear what I'm talking about, and then I'll explain a little bit better. So l- listen to this. Okay, so I just clapped a bunch of those rhythms. Now, hopefully you could hear the theme there. I did these eight bar rhythmic motifs. And again, at the at the show notes today, I actually have the PDF there that you can uh, look at to see the rhythms. But the first eight bars is two eighth notes, a quarter note rest, an eighth note, and then another eighth note. So beats one, one end is two eighth notes, Two is a quarter note, and three and is an eighth note rest and an eighth note. So that's just one bar, three, four, and I repeat that for eight bars over the form, right? Now, the second set of rhythmic motifs is a quarter note, two eighth notes, and a quarter note. So beat one is a quarter note, two and is 
eighth notes and beat three is a quarter note. And I repeat that for eight bars. And then my third set of rhythmic motifs is an eighth note rest, an eighth note, triplet eighth notes, three triplet eighth notes, and a quarter note, right? So an eighth note rest and an eighth note, that's one and, and then three triplets, so that's beats two, and then beat three is a quarter note. So that sounds like this. Right? So then I just repeat that for eight bars. Now, the last rhythmic motif is a quarter, uh, an eighth note rest, an eighth note, another eighth note rest, and then three eighth notes. So eighth note rest and an eighth note, that's one and. And then two and is an eighth note rest and an eighth note. And then beat three is uh, two eighth notes, so three and. So eighth note and eighth note. Okay? And then I repeat that. So that's So there's this nice syncopation over top of that. So I composed out all of these rhythms first. So if you if you look at the sheet, it's just rhythmic notation there. So I start here. Um, here's a recording of it with a little click track. It's a little bit quicker. You can get the idea a little bit better uh, as far as being clear with the recording. So check this out. Okay, did you hear that? So hopefully this gives you an idea of the concept of the exercise so far. Again, just one last time to reiterate, we basically have four different motifs that we're using and they're eighth bar, they're repeated for eight bars each. So basically I'm breaking up Someday My Prince Will Come into four parts and repeating motifs over top of those, but just the rhythms, right? Just the rhythms. And so what I would suggest you do is to compose your own set of rhythms over top of Someday My Prince Will Come or whatever jazz standard you want to approach and just write out rhythmic motifs like this over and over and over again and come up with ideas that you think are interesting. Now, these are kind of basic, but I think that they really spell out the three, four time really well, which again is really helping with that internal time building to be able to feel this, especially uh, if you look at my rhythms, they kind of have uh, some basic some basic, basic rhythms first to really outline the three, four, but then they slowly progress until we get to the last one and there's actually quite a bit of syncopation involved in it. So we're really starting to get inside of the rhythm and breaking it up with different subdivisions, which I think is really cool. Now here's where it gets really exciting for our jazz improvisation. And this is, this is the part that, that gets me really amped. And I remember when I actually composed this for the book, uh, I was super amped with the results I came up with just by starting with rhythms and then moving on to actually adding melodic notes to those rhythms. So that's the next step to this exercise is to start adding melodic notes over top of those rhythms. But to remember that the constraint is those rhythms, right? So we're we're looking at the chords, we're looking at the structure, and we're, we're looking at how we can start outlining those chord tones. So, right, we're looking at the chord tones there, we're looking at the thirds, right, because landing on the thirds is a strong resolution, brings out the quality of the, the chord preceding it and preceding it. So we're using all of these improv techniques that we already know. We're using our knowledge of chords, but we're sticking with those rhythms. So let me show you uh, an example of what I recorded over top of Someday My, My Prince Will Come using those exact rhythms that we just listened to. So check this out. So isn't that cool? Like I love how using those rhythms as my starting point really inspired some cool melodic ideas that I may have not come with 
come up with otherwise. You know, I find that my playing particularly is very eighth note based. You know, I really come from that bebop school, so that's kind of uh, my starting place. However, when composing these rhythms first and then adding the melodic side to them later, uh, I really found that it helped create some very melodic, interesting ideas. Um, let me play for this, play you this one more time and really listen into those rhythms and listen to how I even took melodic motivic development and applied it to the rhythmic motivic development. So meaning with the rhythms, I also took my melodic ideas and developed them as I went along through the piece. So listen to that side of things now. I think you can really hear that melodic motivic development uh, in the second to, well, the last eight bars. So the B flat major seven, D seven sharp nine, E flat major seven, and that E diminished seven. So I go da 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 da. I wish I had better singing voice, but the, you know, I had this melodic idea that kept ascending. And you might have noticed in some other areas, you know, I would go up the rhythm in pitch and then down the rhythm in pitch, right? So it's using my knowledge of melodic rhythmic development as well, uh, melodic motivic development as well, along with these rhythms, okay? So this is a really simple but really powerful exercise. Um, and I will add one more thing too that I think this exercise is beneficial for is composing, so something that I also really hone in on in the Jazz Standards Playbook Volume 2 this time around is composing. So composing being the idea that if we want to become great improvisers, we sort of have to learn how to be composers as well. Because in my mind, improvisation is really composing sped up, right? It's really composing in the moment and responding in the moment, whereas composing is sort of like practicing improvisation, right? Practicing, well, what notes would I want to play? Or what kind of ideas do I hear in my head that I'm not really able to think about fast enough? And this really, really does a great job of doing this. It sort of limits you by having those rhythms in place. There's like limitations, like, okay, I with the first rhythmic rhythmic motif you know we have two eighth notes a quarter note rest an eighth note rest and a quarter note so there's really only three melodic notes per bar that i really need to consider but you also have to consider you know in the second bar of the song you know you have to connect that last eighth note to those second eighth notes so it really makes you think creatively and really makes you think about well what notes would i want to play to emphasize the D7 chord in bar two versus the B flat major seven chord in bar one. Uh, I, I, man, I really hope you try this exercise out because I really think that you're going to be enlightened with what you come up with. And simply by just taking the time to compose, to slow the process down, but to put some constraints, some stipulations on it with these rhythms and creating motivic development for yourself. Okay, so that's your call to action for a day that I want you to take action on is start by, uh, you could take Someday My Prince Will Come or take another jazz standard that maybe you're working on that you want to try to get inside better and start by writing out motifs, uh, eight bar phrases, motifs throughout the entire form, and then go back and and compose some melodic ideas over that and see if you can't come up with a really cool etude-like solo. Uh, I think this is a great call to action. So I want you to do that this week. If there's one thing that you get out of this episode is to take action on this and to give it a try yourself. All right, that's all for today's show. Thanks so much for listening. I appreciate it. Hope you got something out of this lesson today, something short, actionable, and something that you can take away from it in improving yourself on Someday My Prince Will Come or whatever jazz standard you're working on right now. Now, now, like I said, the Jazz Standards Playbook Volume 2, I'm really pumped about it, really excited to share it with you guys. It's coming out uh, this upcoming Sunday, if you're listening to this podcast episode in real time. That's Sunday, May 26th, 2019. And you can find that at the Jazz Standards Playbook 2, that's the number 2, dot 
com. And if you're listening to it before, there's a notification list uh, that you can sign up for right now. But if you're listening to this after May 26, uh, it'll be live up there right now at uh, the Jazz Standards Playbook 2.com. So really encourage you if you want to take a deep dive into jazz standards. Um, we really study these 10 jazz standards, which I have the list up at uh, at the website there. Um, they're really great jazz standards. They really have a ton of lessons to teach us. Uh, in particular, by the way, the harmonic analysis of Someday My Prince Will Come is really enlightening. There's some really cool, important harmonic things that happen in that song that you can learn from. I really believe that learning how to understand jazz standards is a big part of becoming a great jazz improviser, along with learning things by ear, along with all that other stuff that I preach on this podcast. So I really encourage you to check out that book and companion course, by the way, which I also offer along with it. And as always, I ask if you got some value out of today's podcast episode to go ahead and leave a rating review on Apple Podcasts, iTunes, or wherever you listen to your podcast. Uh, just really helps uh, helps out the show, helps other people know that this is a show worth listening to. So if you got even a little bit of value today, uh, take a little time to go do that for us over there. I greatly appreciate it. All right. So next week uh, is going to be the last episode of the Jazz Standards Month on the Learn Jazz Standards podcast. So I hope to see you back then for that one we're going to be uh, actually talking about using target notes target notes to compose great jazz solos over top of another jazz standard so stay tuned for that i look forward to seeing you back then thanks for listening to the ljs podcast brought to you by learnjazzstandards.com subscribe to the series on itunes and don't forget to join our jazz community at learnjazzstandards.com forward slash newsletter Thank you.